Welcome to another video on ankylosing spondylitis. This video contains case presentation, chapter discussion, high yield information for higher exams. Here is our case on ankylosing spondylitis. We will talk about it once we are done with our discussion. Ankylosing spondylitis, also known as Mary Strumpel disease, is a chronic disease characterized by progressive inflammatory stiffening of the joints with affinity for axial skeleton. Ankylosing spondylitis belongs to class of seronegative spondyloarthropathies, which is a family of rheumatological disorders negative for rheumatoid factor, which indicates a different pathophysiological mechanism of the diseases than what is seen in rheumatoid arthritis. Other conditions belonging to seronegative spondyloarthropathies include reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and enteropathic arthropathy, which indicates spondylitis associated with inflammatory bowel disease. Apart from being rheumatoid factor negative, these conditions share one thing in common, that is, majority of cases are related to HLA-B27. Talking about HLA, HLA system is a gene complex situated in chromosome 6 which codes for cell surface proteins that are responsible for regulating immune system in human body. In HLA B27 positive individuals, the misfolded B27 protein leads to activation of T cells and macrophages, as a result of which there is immune system activation, resulting in inflammation in joints and other connective tissues. Now, pathogenesis. It is said that more than 85% of patients with ankylosing spondylitis are HLA B27 positive. However, only 1-2% to of people with HLA B27 develop ankylosing spondylitis. Sacroiliac joints are usually the first to get involved in ankylosing spondylitis, followed by the spine from the lumbar region upwards. The hip, the knee and the manubriosternal joints are also involved frequently. The classic presentation of ankylosing spondylitis is a young adult male patient who presents with gradual onset of pain and stiffness of the lower back. Initially, there is pain and stiffness in the joints, followed by cartilage destruction and bony erosion. As the condition progresses, there is resultant fibrosis, followed by bony ankylosis or fusion. Ankylosing spondylitis affects males three times more than females. There is gradual onset of pain and stiffness in the lower back. There is worsening of pain at night or in early morning and there is lessening of pain with movement or exercise. This condition is associated with enthesitis, which is the inflammation of the enthesis, the sites where tendons or ligaments insert into the bone. Ankylosing spondylitis commonly involves Achilles tendon, iliac crest, tibial tuberosities. Enthesitis is painful on palpation. Now we are back to our case and this makes more sense as we have discussed so many things about this condition. If you are appearing in any exam or you see a case presentation of such kind, then you will be able to find some of the cues which would lead you to the diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis, such as a young man of 24 years old with history of lower back pain that is a gradual onset, taking more time than 3 months, the pain which is worse at night or early morning. So all the best! We have discussed so much about articular manifestations of ankylosing spondylitis, but it is to be noted that this condition presents with wide range of extra-articular manifestations, the first one being ocular. It is said that about 25% of patients with ankylosing spondylitis develop at least one attack of acute anterior uveitis sometimes during the natural history of disease. Next is cardiovascular. Patients with ankylosing spondylitis can develop cardiovascular manifestations in the form of aortic incompetence, cardiomegaly, conduction defects, and pericarditis. Some of the patients develop neurological symptoms due to spontaneous dislocation or subluxation of joints or fracture of spine, which may lead to spinal cord compression. Sometimes ankylosing spondylitis presents with pulmonary involvement, resulting in bilateral apical lobe fibrosis with cavitation, which sometimes simulates tuberculosis on X-ray. Apart from that, ankylosing spondylitis can present with generalized osteoporosis, associated inflammatory bowel disease, or sometimes IgA nephropathy. On examination, there is stiffness and tenderness on the involved joint. Since sacroiliac joint is the most commonly involved joint in ankylosing spondylitis, we will discuss about two tests involving sacroiliac joint here. 
The first test is Genslin's test. In this test, the hip and the knee joints of the opposite side are flexed to fix the pelvis and the hip joint of the side under the test which is indicated by an arrow here is hyperextended over the edge of the table. This will exert a rotational strain over the sacroiliac joint and give rise to pain if the joint is involved. The next test is Patrick's test also known as Faber test where Faber stands for flexion, abduction and external rotation. Faber test is performed as shown in the figure. The test provokes pain in the joint involved. Here are other investigations that you can carry out in a patient with ankylosing spondylitis. It is to be noted that majority of patients with this condition are positive for HLA-B27. X-ray is commonly ordered investigation in this condition. One can see presence of breaching syndesmophytes on X-ray of a spine. A syndesmophyte is a bony growth originating inside a ligament, commonly seen in ligaments of spine, especially in intervertebral joints, leading to fusion of vertebra, and this gives rise to classic bamboo spine sign or dagger sign in anterior-posterior radiograph of spine in later stage of the disease. We are at the most important part of this condition now, that is management. The disease is chronic and painful. That's why the aim of treatment involves relieving of pain and stiffness, maintaining range of skeletal mobility, and avoiding the development of deformities. As the pain and stiffness of ankylosing spondylitis improves with mobility, exercise is highly recommended in such patients. Similarly, long-acting NSAID can be given at night to alleviate morning pain and stiffness. As the condition is associated with inflammation, Anti-TNF therapy can show promising results in such patients. However, this therapy is used in those patients who are inadequately controlled on standard therapy comprising of painkillers and exercise. Low-level glucocorticoid injections can be given in those patients with persistent enthesitis. So, here is the high-yield information section. These are the details that you can't afford to forget if you are discussing about ankylosing spondylitis. Thank you everyone for being with us. This marks the end of our video. We make such videos every week, so stay tuned with us. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon.